Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to follow up on my previous video and take a look at a couple of different ways to configure the positive uh, electrode on these uh, static grass applicators. And that way we should be able to tell which method is the most effective. Having the electrode or the positive charge here on the screen on the front or moving it towards the rear. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned briefly uh, in my previous video and in comments, uh, in the follow-up, one of uh, the viewers here, uh, Ted Amron, uh, told me in, in an email that he had contacted uh, one of the makers of these commercially available uh, static grass applicators, and they had told him that the secret to getting a much more effective application of static grass was to, instead of placing the uh, positive charge electrode in the front, here in the screen material, was to move it uh, to the back behind the uh, static grass. And that gives you a, an, an electrostatic field that encompasses all of the static grass in the applicator, uh, and it does not charge the screen, which could be a good thing since it's going to reduce the chance of getting shocked uh, by touching it. It's also going to stop all that sparking that occurs if you get too close to the ground when applying static grass. So what I'm going to do here is, I've just taken this piece of cardboard and lined it off into three different areas. And what I'm going to do is, first we're going to go back and just do an application of six millimeter uh, static grass onto that piece of cardboard, just to get a reminder of how this one works. And then, next to it, I've got number two. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to make a modification. And we're going to move, uh, we're going to put a screen here in the back of the, uh, uh, of the little Rubbermaid container so that the electrode will be back here, okay, uh, as suggested by the uh, commercial makers. And then we're, and for that I'm just going to install a piece of uh, wire mesh back in here. And then we'll give it another try. Then I've got another uh, application that I want to try, and that will be using a, uh, a large uh, washer uh, instead of the screen, because I'd like to find out whether or not a large metal plate uh, located behind the static grass makes any difference in uh, the charge and the electrostatic field. So we'll have three different approaches. Um, the standard one that you see on most uh, do-it-yourself uh, applicators, and one with the screen in the back, and then another one with a uh, steel and brass washer electrode in the back. So let's get started. Okay, I went ahead and applied some uh, glue here to the surface of the cardboard. So let's spread that out so we get a nice even patch of glue for this test. So I'm going to just shake it all over here and uh, see if we get a very good application. It's coming on pretty thick. Okay, so that's the first one. One thing, if you're using this kind, I always think it's a good idea to ground the wire first because you can get some residual uh, charge in there. And you might get a little shock, it's not going to amount to much. Okay, so that's the application. You can see it's a fairly nice, dense application and the grass fibers are standing up nice and straight and tall. And this is with six millimeter grass. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's take a look at the modification that I want to make uh, to the uh, static grass applicator. Okay, so I went up to the hardware store the other day and I picked up this nylon screw and nut. 
Now I'm going to use nylon or plastic, either one, because if you've got this uh, in your uh, static grass applicator and it's metal, there's a chance that you're going to get shocked uh, by inadvertently touching the head of that screw. So if you use a plastic or nylon, it's going to be insulated. And that's what I'm going to use to hold everything together. Okay, I also picked up this brass washer or bronze washer, and I'm going to solder the uh, positive wire to that in order to give me the uh, connection that we need to conduct electricity to this aluminum screen that I'm going to put in the back of the uh, static grass applicator. So let me go ahead, I've got to go ahead and, and uh, solder this together and then I'll show you how that all fits together before we do a test. So what I've done is drilled a hole through the top of the uh, holder here, or the uh, handheld unit, and uh, I inserted my nylon screw in here so that it's coming through here. I went ahead and soldered the uh, red wire to the washer, and I made a hole in the wire screen. So I'm going to slide that down in here and place the washer over top of that and then add the uh, screw or the then add the nut and I'll show you this in a second as soon as I get it get my fingers out of there so then we've got the uh, red wire soldered to the uh, bronze or brass uh, washer and that's holding this wire mesh in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, that's going to give us the positive electrode in the rear behind the static grass. So let's go ahead and dump some more static grass in here and we'll get it all set up and give it another try. Okay, I've got it all back together. I've applied another uh, patch of glue to the surface. So let's see how it works now with this different arrangement. Okay. Oh yeah, I can see already that it is standing up much better. Okay, and no static charge. Okay, so let's see, let's do a head-to-head, -head. shake off the extra, and you can take a look here. You know, I really am not sure that there's a big difference in them. But I like the idea that if I touch that screen, I'm not going to get shocked. So I like that idea better. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and, as I said, I'm going to replace the wire mesh with a, uh, a big uh, flat washer and see if that makes a difference. Okay, for this iteration, what I've done, I've removed the wire screen and I've got this big flat uh, steel washer. And I'm just going to drop it in place back in here and slide the bronze washer with the positive wire attached to it and we'll screw that down into place and this will be a smaller electrode so let's see if that makes a difference okay so now you can see that's what it looks like with just a washer as the uh, positive electrode in here okay doke here we are set up I've already applied the glue to patch three let's see that one uh, let's see how this uh, configuration works. As I said, you don't have to worry about getting a shock. That didn't happen. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see how it came out.
shake off the excess. Okay, so just as a reminder then, this is the patch done using the configuration with the uh, positive electrode attached to the wire mesh at the front of the uh, applicator. You can get an idea there from the side. This is using the wire mesh in the back. Okay, and that's what that looks like, comparing the two. Okay, and this is the third method with the wire, uh, with the uh, washer in the back. And um, I think I'm just gonna leave the washer in the back. I, it seems to be a much better coverage here in the center. Um, where you would, uh, where I was working mainly. Um, they all look like they're standing up about the same. I, I think the real uh, proof of the pudding will be when I'm able to try this with say some 10 or 12 millimeter uh, static grass. Like I said, this is six millimeter, but you know, it does a great job with that, no matter which way it's, it's uh, configured. But I think in the future, if I built another one of these, I would just go with the uh, washer. Because I, I really do, I really do think this is probably the best uh, coverage and the grass is standing up very nice, thick and straight. Okay, so again, method one with the uh, positive charge up front, method two with the wire mesh in the rear, and method three with a uh, single washer in the rear as the uh, positive electrode. Well, I hope that clears up all the questions uh, about which is the best method uh, or the location for the positive charge. I definitely will be moving or keeping mine uh, in the rear of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Rubbermaid container uh, behind all the static grass and take the charge away from uh, the screen itself. So I think that is the way to go. It, it, uh, and also, please, do use one of these uh, plastic or nylon uh, screws that you can get at your local hardware store. You know, Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, I think I got this at Ace Hardware. And so they're a fairly inexpe inexpensive option. And uh, they'll do a pretty good job, I think, of holding your container in place. Um, so I think it'll simplify the, uh, the whole uh, construction process. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, you can see I think that uh, method three, the single washer, does a very, very good job here. It's a very dense, uh, uh, thick uh, coverage, and it's standing up very nice and tall. So I think I'm gonna stick with that final configuration. Now, just uh, some follow-up uh, things to pass on to you. So I have uh, created a website, and I have uploaded a copy of my wiring data. Uh, diagram to that. So if you go to the description either in this video or the previous video where I gave all of the parts list, I'll be adding uh, my uh, website address to that so you can go there to download that, uh, that image. Um, and it's a simple JPEG. It doesn't take up much space at all. So you should be able to you know, click on it and download it and save it uh, to your computer without any problems. Now, I know I had said that I was gonna do this video here on Monday. However, I went and got my uh, COVID vaccination the other day. And uh, to be honest with you, although I didn't have any major uh, uh, significant uh, side effects, I haven't felt you know, completely 100%. Uh, just sort of foggy and uh, more than usual anyway, as my wife would tell you. What I had planned to do for the next uh, phase of construction on the modules was to add the DC uh, power bus uh, to that. So on Monday, we'll start with adding the DC power bus uh, to the modules. And then on Friday of next week, we will go ahead and wire up and power the KD electromagnets, install the push buttons for those, and the timers and all of that circuitry. So it's gonna be a two-step process. First, we'll do the DC uh, power bus for the, uh, for the modules, and then on the second uh, uh, go round, we will go ahead and install, or we will go ahead and uh, provide power to the uh, KD electromagnets. So come on back next week for those uh, two videos. Um, people have been asking me when I was gonna do that, so here it comes, guys. In the meantime, have a great weekend and stay safe, and you know, 
when, when it's available, get your COVID vaccination because I don't even have a sore arm today. And um, it's just mainly that feeling that you get when you've got, you know, a mild case of the flu or something where you just don't feel 100%. Have a good one, and we'll see you next week with more videos from the DCC Guide. Bye now.